Hello everyone and welcome to the research and software engineering group here at, uh, in Building 99 in Redmond. I'm here with uh, Ben Lifshitz and Emre. Uh, so Emre, well, let's start with you. Who are you? My name is Emre, uh, Emre Kujman. And, um, yeah, sorry, I didn't try your it's last okay. name. <laughs> it's okay. And um, I'm a researcher here at uh, Microsoft Research. I work on uh, internet service architectures and web application front ends, as well as uh, I've been dabbling recently in, in search and social networking type of things. So, um, so that means you spend all your time in Twitter, or? No, no. I actually am not a huge user of these things. I think they're fun, and I I see how why people use them. Um, and I'm trying to get in, into it, and I've had more luck with some social networking sites than others. All right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I've done a, a lot of work all around from the backend internet services and their architectures and uh, analyzing logs of their behaviors with machine learning techniques and things like that. And then also uh, gone and looked at them from the web application side, more the JavaScript type of the things that we're going to talk about today. And now with some of the social networking search stuff, I'm looking at it from the top down, like how do you develop on these uh, on top of these infrastructures. And so that's uh, kind of fun to get uh, that variety of, of, of perspectives on the, this space. So I'm having a lot of fun here. Sounds good. Ben. Okay, I'm Ben Lifshitz. I uh, work in the runtime analysis group at uh, Microsoft Research. I've been here for, well, let me see, for about two years now. So my interest, my background is actually in compilers and programming languages, but lately I've been kind of uh, moving into some of the other areas. So uh, some of the work with Ember involves looking at uh, things on the intersection of uh, operating systems and languages and networking and languages, and that's actually what we're going to talk about today as well. Uh, so another big interest of mine is looking at web applications. So how do you make web applications more performant? Again, another focus of today's discussion. Today's discussion. That sounds very interesting. Should you break? Another big, a big interest of mine is security. So there is a number of uh, projects underway on how to make uh, web deployment applications more secure. How to analyze JavaScript. How to build things into browsers and so on and so forth. Cool. Okay, so uh, you mentioned uh, we we're going to talk about something really cool today. So yeah. what so are we going to talk about? Sure. So there is this cool thing which has a very long name. So just because mm -hmm. it has a tremendously zoom long in. name, we decided to write it up. So there you go. So Visual Studio Ajax Profiling Extensions Parallel Tool. Yeah, and it might actually have to be Microsoft Visual Studio 2008 Ajax Profiling Extension Power Tool. Um, it could be a little longer. I, I don't know if I'm forgetting any, any parts of it. Microsoft Should be copyrighted on you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, we'll, we'll, we might occasionally call it by its, its previous names. It's originally. Yes, originally. Yes, originally as a research project we called it Ajax Scope. At some point that changed to be Ajax View. And um, so if we slip and, and call it by one of the shorter names, uh, you'll have to excuse us. I think I'm still following, so, so okay, we can go on. Always, always be Ajax Scope. All right. Cool. I don't know about you, Amber, but... Uh, yeah, I have a bit of a... I can go with back and forth. <laughs> so what is it? I mean, that's a nice name. Um, I give you that. What does, what does it do exactly? Okay. So the problem that we started looking at in this research was, basically, we saw that people develop these big web applications, lots of JavaScript code. I mean, some of the applications we looked at, there were, what, uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands hundred thousand lines of code, a uh, megabyte of code being shipped down into people's browsers, thousands of functions, this is all running, and it's, it's critical to, to, to the web application working correctly. So it's not like this is just doing a little bit of UI flash here and there. These things are actually coordinating uh, all the like, information download from 10 different services and combining all the data and, uh, to, for display in the browser. And, but, the, but the challenge was that once this JavaScript code shipped to an end user's browser and was running inside the browser, the developer, the original guy who wrote this code, had no visibility into how that code was behaving. Is it fast? Is it slow? Is it actually buggy? Is it working at all? Unless the user actually complained, sent, wrote an email and said, I'm having problems on uh, you know, this version of this browser on this operating system, you wouldn't, uh, the developer would have, wouldn't have any feedback. And so that's the problem we we're trying to address with Ajax Scope, was to give the web application developer the visibility into how their program was executing on someone else's computer uh, far away in a web browser that 
uh, could be any web browser out there. Right. And, um, so and so that's, that's the general problem, right? That's the general problem. Now, what we're going to talk about today, the power tool, right? This can go here. So it's a power tool, we can actually download it? Exactly. So the power tool was downloadable as of um, several weeks ago, I, I believe. There are forums you can uh, go to if you have questions. Cool. You can sort of talk to other users. You can uh, contact us and so on and so forth. But the focus of the power tool uh, is on performance, which is to say that you have JavaScript that you are shipping over to run within the client's browser. You don't have any idea how well or poorly it performs. You would like to do some form of profiling. You would like to understand what the performance what on next side. And that's what the power of tool is about. Yep. And um, one nice thing, as you can, might guess from the name, the power tool is integrated into Visual Studio, so we get to take advantage of all of, all of their nice performance analysis and visualization techniques. And, and, and we'll see a demo at, at the end of the movie. That's right. You'll uh, see the tool in action. The demo of the power tool to so maybe let's go and uh, and understand the big picture about sure, about sure. the tool. So let's erase the name now. Yep. There goes that. Alright, so the big okay. picture. Should we try it? Uh, try to draw it at the same time? time? Yeah, I'm going to take green. Or black, I guess. So, so. Okay, that's going to be that's gonna be interesting. This okay, is, I'm going to so Okay, so, so the server. which slide? Three, are you doing? two, one, oh, no. okay, go. Okay, I'm doing the server. Okay, I'm doing the client. So this is typical web app yeah. async operation. Yeah. Um, so lots of the graphics, whiz bang. Um, and then you have. This is yeah, instrumented JavaScript. I think the black side is, is going faster. Yeah, yeah. Haha, it's a yeah. uh, instrumented JavaScript. Of course, we need a user here who is going to be happy. Um, and then let's say that there's actually many more users here. Okay, so we'll let's bring them in later. Come on, draw some more. Are you? <coughs> Let's draw next. next. More users. More users. Anyway, oh, this is fine. Okay. So let's let's review that that drawing first, the the, the black one. Yes. Um, so what so, do we have here? Um, we have here the client side. Okay. Of the web application equation. So we've got on the left hand side, Ben drew the web application server <laughs> and everything going on. Yeah, we'll see in that in a center. minute. We'll see that in a second. And then the user here now they visit a web browser. They uh, they open up their web browser. They type in the URL. It takes them to this website and basically this big HTML and JavaScript document gets loaded into their web browser and starts running here. So you've got you know, shapes and things and, and moving and clicking. He's and obviously happy. Like and he's happy. Oh, no, wait, let's say he's unhappy. We want to find out why. Okay. He's unhappy. That's <laughs> mean. <laughs> <laughs> he's this girl. Yeah. There we go. That's that's the open open circle eyes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and so he's having a bad experience, or she, I, whoever. Um, and so it's going to be basically a developer on the, the 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 server side who wants to find out why. So Ben, why did you make this person unhappy? <laughs> now it's me. <laughs> oh, I should, I should actually, before we go on to the server, I should point out that, uh, you know, this application, I mean, I don't know, think about something like Hotmail. So it's an application that has a complex uh, set of, uh, you know, different functionalities on the server side. You can serve your mail, it can, you know, or, you know, do tons of other things. Maybe there's IAM functionality, who knows. Now, on the client, you know, the, all that fancy GUI stuff and potential non-GUI stuff as well is typically done using JavaScript, which is to say with an application like this, you know, this is where you see a lot of uh, complicated, complex uh, client-side functionality. Clearly, if you have, I don't know, say, five lines of JavaScript, then, you know, none of this is terribly interesting. It's only when you start approaching, say, I don't know, 50,000 lines of code, 100,000 lines of code, that you start worrying about, uh, you know, sort of the end-to-end -end performance and other uh, characteristics of your distributed application. Right. Those numbers are scary. <laughs> yeah, they well, happen today. That's yeah. what happens today. So large applications like, say, Facebook, Gmail, Hotmail, uh, Live, all the and so on. Uh, all the doc, all like the office type of applications right. on the web. Yeah, yeah, they're probably even bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, the server, right? So all the server does really is the server is actually pretty innocent. So it does its server yeah, It has thing. a flower. Do you... It's not a flower. It's like you know, I don't oh, know, okay, something these gears else. turning or whatever. It's supposed to represent. It's not a flower. Okay. Anyway, so its functionality is uh, coded up in I don't know C plus plus or C sharp or Java or what have you, and as part of uh, 